a blank canvas here inside ZBrush. Now whether you're using a mouse or a pen tablet like I am, if you go ahead and click inside the canvas, you're going to start laying down pixels. Now you'll notice that this inherently looks somewhat 2D, as if we're drawing on a canvas in another program, maybe like Photoshop. But what's very unique about this is even though that we are painting these pixels onto the canvas, we are painting them with depth. You can see that there's a little bit of shadowing going on here. And if I hold down the Alt key, I can actually carve into this surface. So you can build this elevation up and then hold Alt to carve in. So I'm going to show you your first keyboard shortcut by holding down Control and then pressing the N key. And that'll go ahead and clear my canvas so then I can start painting a clean new canvas. So again, Control and N. And just like many digital programs, if you go ahead and press Control Z, that's your undo key. Okay, so this is 2.5D. Now as we move on, we'll talk more about 2.5D and more about 3D. I just don't want you to be confused between the two. So let's hit Control N and clear this. I'm now going to draw in a 3D object and hit this edit button up here so I can make it live. You'll notice now that I can rotate this 3D object and if I make it a poly mesh, I can sculpt on it. Now again, don't worry about all the buttons I'm pushing now. I'm just clearly showing you an example between 2D or 2.5D, I should say, and 3D. So right now, of course, we're working in 3D. I can drop this model to canvas by hitting the edit button again, and now it's been dropped, which means I can't rotate it anymore, but I can draw in other ones. Again, now I'm in 2.5D. What's very unique about 2.5D is we're almost not limited by any of our poly count. I can draw in millions and billions of these and not ever get a slowdown in speed, which is very, very unique. I can even switch back to my simple standard brush and then do some additional sculpting or hold down the Alt key and carve in. So again, if you're new to ZBrush and you're familiar with other 3D packages, this concept of 2.5D versus 3D might be a little bit foreign to you, but it's a simple concept to understand. And as we move forward, we'll understand it fully. So again, I'll hit Control N to clear my canvas. Let's take a look at some of the startup 3D meshes that we can find inside ZBrush. I'm going to go up to my tool palette, click on the palette handle and drag that over to the right hand side. You notice that you have a button here which is your current active tool. If you click on that, you're going to notice a shelf here that says startup 3D mesh. So click on one of these, I'm going to choose the gear. I'm going to click and drag and draw that into my canvas. I'll hit the edit button to make that editable so that I can rotate it around my scene. And then let's scroll down to the initialize pull down. So if you open up initialize you'll notice that there's a lot of settings associated with this gear. One of them might be something like coverage. We can even change the outer profile of the spikes and make a very unique tool very different from the initial one that we started with. Once you're done converting this to the different settings that you want, you can scroll all the way up to the top of your tool palette and click Make Poly Mesh 3D. Once we click Make Poly Mesh 3D, that'll make this tool editable, meaning that we can start working on it and sculpting on it. So I'm going to hit Control D twice just to add a little bit more resolution to this. And I might choose something like my blobby brush. And I could start sculpting away. Let's take a look at another tool inside ZBrush. So I'll hit the letter T, which is also the keyboard shortcut for edit, and then Control N to clear that. Again, I'm going to go to the active tool icon, open that up, and then choose something else. Click and drag to draw that into your canvas, and then again hit the edit button so that we can start working with it. Now let's scroll back down to initialize. Now when you open up Initialize for this different tool for this spiral, you'll notice that we have several different settings. Each initial primitive is going to have its own settings here under Initialize. So this one also has coverage that we can turn up or down. We can change the thickness and many different attributes. So I suggest when you're new to ZBrush, just jump into this tool palette here, check out each one of these primitives and see what you can do. So again, now that we're done changing these initial settings, 
I'm going to go up to Make Polymesh 3D, and then we can start sculpting. Take notice that that initial setting pulldown has now disappeared. Once you convert it to a Polymesh 3D, you won't be able to change any of those initial settings. So you'll want to set all the settings to what you want before you convert it. Now we can start sculpting. I'm going to hit the letter T again, and then Control N to clear. Let's click this button here that says Default C Script, which is going to take us back to our Start menu. I'm going to select one of these common use tools. And let's take a look at this Poseidon character. Now this Poseidon character is a Polymesh 3D at this point, which means it doesn't have any initial settings, but it can do sculpting on it right away. If you were to import a .obj file from a different program, you would also be able to sculpt on it right away, but you wouldn't be able to change any initial settings. Those are reserved just for these startup 3D meshes. Just like most digital programs inside ZBrush, you have the ability to undo your actions. Let's test this out. I'm going to go over to my stroke and turn on the drag rectangle and then choose alpha 22. I'll hold down the alt key so I can carve in kind of this veiny looking pattern onto this character. Now of course if I'm unhappy with that I'll hit control and then Z to undo that. The amount of undos that you have available to you can be changed under your preferences menu. So I'll open that up, scroll down to where it says memory, and you'll notice that you have the ability to change your undo settings. You notice at the top left hand corner of your screen you have this edit button. This allows us to take a tool from a 2.5D state into a full 3D state. Let's take a look at an example of this. I'm going to click inside my tool palette to open up this shelf. I'm going to select something like the gear 3D. If I now click and draw into my canvas I'll draw that in. But you notice if you try to sculpt on it you're just going to draw in more gears. I'm going to hit Control N to clear this. Once again, I'll click and draw to draw this gear in, but this time I'm going to go up to the Edit button. Be aware that the keyboard shortcut for the Edit button is the letter T. Now that I've pressed the Edit button, I can rotate this gear, I can move it, or even scale it. If I were to hit the Edit button again, I will now drop this gear to canvas, and now it's in 2.5 D state. Again, you'll notice that my active tool is a gear, so I can draw in more gears. If I hit Edit, the last gear that I drew in will now become 3D again. And then I can hit Edit to drop that to canvas one more time. When it's dropped to canvas, we can actually do very unique things like use our smudge brush to kind of smear this all together. Again, Control N to clear. You'll notice if you bring in, it'll already be in edit mode. So the minute I click inside my canvas, I can start to rotate, move, and scale this face. If I were to click edit at this point, I would drop this face to canvas, and then of course I couldn't rotate it anymore. But I could, however, draw more of these faces in, hit the edit key, position them, and then hit edit to drop them to canvas. I could then use some of my 2.5D tools, like the snake hook brush, to make some interesting changes to the pixels on the surface. 